There are two strong pulls for us in fly fishing. Exploration with a hopeful mind's eye of discoveries and possibilities is a massive draw. Returning to known waters that have produced amazing moments is equally inspiring, leading to hopes of new moments. It's often specific spots, that magical run or riffle, that drives us to return with hope. One specific shelving riffle drives us to return to this river just to see what might happen. It's a remarkable shelving riffle that could be on any freestone river near you or us. When you recognize the features, the characteristics, the water flow dynamics, and the all around has to be troutness of it, you look for similar shelving riffles on your trout stream. Every trout stream has one like this, and when you find it, you're going to develop the moments and memories that we share here. Let's start by sharing a tougher morning session before we share some of the memories of the same riffle 10 years earlier. So it's humid, it's, it's hot, it's seven o'clock in the morning and we finally got where we're going and we're hoping for a PMD spinnerfall. Nope, nothing, not a bug. I think the only thing that's going on here is the uh, greater yellow legs up here and he's chirping at us. So change of plan. Um, not, I'm gonna ignore this stuff down here for a bit. I'm gonna go right up to the head riffle and basically I'm just gonna run a oversized caddis, sedge, whatever you wanna call it. Could be a yellow sally, could be a small golden stone, little yellow stone. Could just be a terrestrial moth or a caddis. And below that, about 18 inches, 15 inches, I got a little uh, copper tail, hair's ear, tungsten bead, and that's on 4X. And what I'm just gonna try to do, because the last time we were here about four, no, five days ago, fishing along here, the water was twice the flow that it is right now. And I suspect that because of that, and plus the press of heat and bright sky, we're gonna at least get a few fish nosed into the riffle at the top. Now, don't get me wrong, it, the, we're, on a, we're on a piece of water that flows cold. It, it just is cold. I'd be shocked if the water temperatures this morning was in the high 40s, to be honest with you. It won't get past 55, 60, even in 35, 40 degree heat. Um, so I'm complicating things by talking Fahrenheit <laughs> and celsius there it's going to be about 35 degrees celsius today which i don't know what's that 90 fahrenheit the water temperature might get to mid 50s fahrenheit which is what about 12 13 maybe 14 degrees celsius there's no issue there it's just a matter of the bright sun um the heat impacting bug activity and the lowering water, the half the flows means that those fish have to go somewhere for overhead cover. And that's what I'm gonna to try to op, uh, make, maximize my opportunity on and just go target that. And then we'll have a poke around and just see if anything's rising back here before we leave this area. And just carry on, work the, work the shallow riffles, hope somebody's nosed in. Okay, so right now I'm using four weight Helios 3. I got gorgeous little Mirage LT reel. I've got a double taper hydros line. Got about a 15 foot leader to 4X to my caddis and about 18 inches of 4X down to a little nymph. And if you're wondering how to cast that stuff, you literally have to have a decent line speed, go up to one o'clock, pause with line speed, and then you can do whatever you want from there. Just like that, and pause, and place. And up, pause, place. See how slow that can be, guys? You don't have to force anything, even with a little four weight rod. The water I'm really after is up here. So I'm just gonna continue on that. Just a nice, gentle cast out there. See if anybody wants to move. The other thing I'm facing is the sun coming that way. And when the sun comes that way and you're landing, you're crossing the fish. So you have to have that broken overhead um, choppy water just to even feather a cast in there. It's not easy. You can spook a fish so easily in this stuff. So that's a bit of a, 
rough little current there because I'm in between two current seams. I am going to target just this, just that right there, that far seam, just see if anybody comes up at all or if there's anybody around. We know there's fish here. Hands down there's fish here. I guess I could have cast, oh, there's a big old sedge on the water right there. Same size, same everything as the fly I've got on. So that works. Nobody's eating it either, of course. So now I'm in the stuff that I'm most interested in. This is the cool stuff to me. Uh, it's shallowing up, it's a long tapered gravel. And I'm gonna go real slow now. This is where everything for me slows right down. Pretty quick, it's gonna be just up, pause, place. You don't need much of a cast. You don't want to mend too much because you don't want to create too much disturbance on the surface of the water either. The reason for that is, well, nothing's happening. And if you're going to try to get a induce a fish to come up or even look at your nymph, well, you, you can't beat them on the head. So up, pause, place, let that shoot. Now I'm starting to get a little bit, every step now I'm going to be getting a little bit more intense. Every step now, I'm going to be going, okay, this, is, this has got wicked awesome possibilities. I'm after one. I'm just after one fish. I'm going to work the water best I can, manage the run. And come over here, up, pause, place. Just enough energy that it turns over, lays out. You don't need any more energy than that. It just has to up, pause, and turn over. There's no wind, there's nothing to fight but your own head. Just nice and casual. Again, up, pause, out, up, pause, place, right on that seam. It's gonna be a fish, right? This is the hopefulness you have to have. Absolutely have to have this hopefulness. Okay. Up, pause, place, right on that seam. I'm trying to do this expeditiously, but methodically, just for exactly the video purpose, would I go slower? Yes, I would go even slower than this. The reason for the long leader is so that I can land my fly line well back of the seam line in the shallowest, shallowest stuff, allow my fly to turn over, get right into that shallow riffle, and not spook anybody in the meantime. Right now, I'm not seeing shapes might be seeing one right there anything that's a dark patch on this now anything that's a dark patch could be a fish because it's basically you're looking for the shadow thing is you're not moving there's no bugs there's no mergers there's no anything to get too excited about right in here and right through here you'd see movement on of a smudge or two, right? Let's try this. Right in through there. Yeah, there we go. Right yeah. On. yeah, 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 yeah. I could see that smudge the whole time. And wow. Okay. I love that stuff in shallow, hey? And that gorgeous morning sun that just makes it oh so much nicer. He actually took the dry fly. Yeah, the intensity of just keep feeding that fish and working slowly. Be methodical on the on the blind casting, whoo, boosha. Okay, heads on the surface. Come on. Heads on the surface. Got it. Wicked. Nice. There we go. Got her? Anytime. Okay, here we go. go yeah. yeah. Wicked. <laughs> and you see how I've come along? This is all a shelf, right? And if there's bugs, if there's caddis hatching, if there's mayflies, they're gonna be nosed into this stuff all the way along. And it's basically an angled shelf all the way along here and up. It's still deep enough, way up top there to hold a fish. It looks crazy. A lot of people walk right past that, but oh man, that's some of the best water is still to come. Not the best water, some of the best water. And it's just a matter of, you know, getting your flies, Launching her over there. Right in here. 
You just don't know. I mean, you can you can try to see everything, but you're not going to see everything. That fish, the fish I caught, I saw for sure, but you're not going to see every fish in here. That's for sure. It's just too dancy, too everything. This water. It's the very top of this shelving riffle where about 10 years earlier we fished when the rock wasn't so covered by loose gravel found today and the trout absolutely stacked in. We fished with a couple of friends and had a whale of a time. We've never shared this footage, but it's a perfect tie-in to the video because it underscores just how amazing these shelves can be, but also drives home the fact if loose gravel shifts in high water events, you can find a couple dozen fish nosed into such riffles one year and be devoid of trout the next. Also notice that because it was the peak of afternoon, we approached this bit from the opposite side of the river to give us our best light to gain shadows of the fish nosed in, allowing us to easily target their moving smudges and shadows. Oh, he's right there, right in between yeah. there. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then so. Yeah. He might want you to lead one more foot upstream just to get a little daintier drift, you know what I mean? There you go. You gotta lead him a touch more, love. Serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he oh. refused. Hey, he ha I bet you it was the nymph. Because it was a 10 inches away or a foot away. Yeah. Yeah. Go again, he's still there, love. That's lots of line. And he moved. Yeah. Yeah. He did move on that. Just a little bit. I I still Go again. Feed the fish. You're leading them huge, but you're a foot to the left. I thought. A foot to the left? A left, yeah. I think. Okay. Yeah, we both agree, yeah. I got you, great cast. Oh, he looked. Just the little tail lift, eh? It, it might have just been a drag, though. Okay? Might have just been a drag. Yeah. Yeah. Have to change. He was all over that caddis pupa. Short. Yep. Yeah. Was. That was fast. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you had us fooled. You don't mind netting it for? Wow. That was bizarrely fast. Right on. Well, it was kind of a crazy fish because I was casting a PMD down to a little dropper caddis pupa, and uh, sure enough, I had a bunch of actually really good drifts over him. You could see he was just in that riffly, shallowy, riffly water, and uh, wouldn't take, wouldn't take, and then <laughs> I get one crappy cast. Didn't lead him much at all, like maybe by a half a foot if I was lucky, and uh, sure enough, he just comes up. And it was obviously in the perfect line for the fish because he just came up, took the nymph immediately. And it was like just within seconds that my fly had landed, so. Well, it's funny because you, you had two absolute outright refusals. 
Yeah, exactly. And yeah, that's fish, true. You know, on the nymph, it that's was right. right behind. It was like, you got to be kidding me. And then you had a couple more great drifts. And then you pooch one cast, and you, it was almost, from where we were, it was a good cast, but it was a punch pile drive of the nymph in. Yeah. And that fish just and responded. And it was just right on top of where he was holding, right? And yeah. And when you said, I got him, it was like, oh. I yeah, get... it was just instant. Yeah. It was just automatic. He just so took, the so. unexpected things do happen, and you just have to continue on with the cast, even if it's really what you consider a bad cast. And exactly. And I think that there's a little bit of grace in that kind of water, because he's holding in just a, a real shelving riffle where there's lots of dancy water. And yeah, you've got a bit of grace in there, so that even if you do, you don't end up leading the fish, which I didn't very much, you still got a chance. So, yeah, it worked out well. Over to the right a bit. It's the original home. Downstream of the bucket, to the left of the main seam. Where you last saw him, up nose in, he's about eight yards downstream. Okay, seven meters down, five meters downstream, and he's just come left nymphing a bit. There, he's dropping down. He just nymphed. Got him? Yeah, don't be afraid to reach over that seam, eh? With your rod tip. Oh, refused? Oh, yeah, he chased and then refused. Nymph? Yeah. Oh! Yep. Yes! Yes! He was hot though. It was really hot. Yeah. I don't think he's anywhere near the biggest one that was over there. No. I was with the caddis pupa, hey? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Like it. Good. Yeah, he's, that's the one I'm just saying, like he's nymph. Yeah, he, t he took on the dry, hun. Yeah, I'm rolling. Oh, he dropped that. Oh, he hammered it. You want to flip him? You do or don't? Okay, yeah, he's right there. Yeah. He's left of the white rock. He's right on the white rock. He's dropping back. There he is. Do you have a nymph? No, you took it off. Okay, good. He's right. You're gonna no no longer here. That's it. That's it. Oh. Wow. How'd he Not take so that? much line, Nick. Just a little less. He's right in that main seam off, sort of left. Now he's gone to the white rock, his yeah. tail's in the white rock, and he's facing left of the white rock. Upstream a little bit. He's coming downstream to feed. Oh, I see him. Yes. Yep, yeah. there, he just rose. He just dropped right in front of you. Okay, I'm shutting up. There you go. Oh! Follow. He bonked it. Yeah. Okay, let's see what there? happens because I want to refocus if he goes home. All, All right. right. We'll we got another fish. Okay. Okay, so that biggest. See if the nymph's dead rise. That one that just rose. He's actually holding on this side of that rectangular slab. Yeah. See the biggest rectangular All slab? All these two right side by side. And he's immediately on the left side of that slab.
Yeah, good choice, Nick. <laughs> yeah. What a nice clean brown, holy cow. Yeah. Took on the surface. Nice. Maybe to the right, eh? That was him. That's good. Yeah. Refused. Refused. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Might have just been an angle. What? Yeah, I'm again. No, refused again. Refused again. Interesting, okay. Oh, nice rise. He went uh, four feet to the right to take on the surface. It's not smooth. It just doesn't make it That's right. It's a decent fish. It is a good fish. And by the time she finishes with this, we'll go and fish to that one. Yep, just look for the darkest spot. Yep, you're pointing at it. You're you're pointing at it. Yep. Yeah, he's a little in that scene. He, don't forget that yellow rock, but... Yeah. You're downstream of him, hey? Lead him a bit more, a little further over, a little bit more. Yep. Yep. There we go. Hang tight, Nick. I think you might have, did you feel like you could have had him on that last one? Okay, then we got to- there's no way my dip sunk to the bottom. Okay, we have to find him, because we don't got him right now. <laughs> Just got the rise. Nothing like turning the camera on and then it rises right away. Now the only reason I'm saying I'll go for that is because I don't expect it to catch on the ground. If I don't mm. catch it on the ground, mm -hmm. after a few really good trips, you come in with your neck. Oh, he rose again. He's really popping. That's beautiful. Yeah. 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 I just think that one is like a rise of It is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this one's going to town. Oh, Wait yeah. a second, there's another fish way over. That's you ready? Yeah, rolling. <gasps> what happened? Yep. Nice. Wonderful. How was that for delay shake? Yep. Stupid, hey?
Go net, net, net. Yep. <laughs> Huge connection. Mm. Beautiful fish. And he's ready to go. <laughs> Shot off like a dart. Yeah, see that rise? Yeah. That right that that's a fish. Yeah, and again, he just went yeah, it's Really? I thought it was brown. <laughs> Well, you might be right. And again, actually, I think Amelia's right. Oh, okay. He, I think he missed it, Nick. He did. He missed it. He missed it. He's still there. Nice. Oh. That's Again, it's hard as it's that tiny there he goes. mouth, right? That was a downstream. He, that one came from the top left, Dave. Yeah. The fish wow. that you're going after just rose again. Okay. I see the top left one, like the top. Okay, you see how there's like those three slab rocks, the two rectangle ones and one above it? There's three actually, there's actually three fish in a row. Yeah. About that far apart. But you're, the one that you just missed, came turned from, from the top. Yeah. I thought I was gonna get cute and float it down, but no. Okay, here we go. You ready, Mel? Yeah. I'm gonna go a little just out. Yep. You got him. Sorry, I thought the heat went up once. Still there? Yeah, he's still yeah. there. Go for it. You Right on. Wow. What's that, five slots into the same mouth? Okay. Nice. Heartless takes, that's what's going on. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Hope it doesn't run, it's around my, there's a new one, it's around the sucker of my scalp. Yeah, yeah, you got a whole pile of loose slack. There you go. So yeah, look at that mouth, just whacked. Yeah. That's why I kept missing. Isn't that amazing? Amazing, hey? But it yeah. makes sense, and then skinny. Let's see him kind of out of the water. Yeah. Zoom out a bit. And... Wicked. Cool. If you love our content and want to support us while viewing and experiencing our best media and educational content, our Patreon channel is alive with content. By joining our site, you gain access to weekly producer's notes supporting every YouTube feature as well as access to our topical short courses and access to our Fly Fishing Trout Streams Master Course. Our Patreon page is a perfect exchange where we provide our best and most in-depth work to improve your trout stream fly fishing while supporting our work so we can continue to develop and grow our media.